Why is chewing your food so important for a healthy diet, for healthy eating, but also for a healthy body? That's what we're going to explore in this tutorial. We're going to look at some uh, specific topics, notably what is chewing doing, and then stages of mastication and the architecture of the small intestine, because what that's going to do, that's going to help us understand why chewing your food is so important. What does the chewing of food actually do? Well, number one, it's breaking down food into smaller particles because what's actually happening is the food is then getting absorbed through the small intestine into the bloodstream and then it's being taken to wherever it needs to go. So the, the, the food has to be small enough to be able to do that and the first stage of getting it there is chewing your food. So if you're not chewing your food enough, in some respects, you're not getting all the nutrition from the food that's possible. Secondly, it's releasing nutrients. Now, what this means, if you can imagine a piece of food, and then what we've got are these little, we'll just call them cells. I'm not going to draw very good ones, but let's just say they look something like this. And then you've got all the different nutrients held within them. So again, if we're not chewing our food properly, they're going to get stuck in the, in the cells of the food when we chew them, all of these cells, they will break down. So all of these, and let's just say joints, will get pulled apart, broken up. So then all of these nutrients will essentially be released from that cell, ready to be absorbed into the body. So they, again, can be used by the body. And then also it's helping with the chemical digestion. So all the enzymes that are being released, again, that will in part start in the mouth with all the different um, parts of the saliva that are being released. Again, moistening the food, breaking the food down, breaking it into smaller particles. So when we go down through uh, the gastrointestinal tract, it will then meet the small intestines ready to be absorbed. To add to this, we've also got stages of mastication. So the stages of chewing your food. So obviously the first stage is putting the food in your mouth and then positioning it between your molars. So we may uh, use the f these front teeth to sort of chop the food up, slice the food up so we can put it into our mouth. So that's essentially putting the food in your mouth, unless it's obviously bite size. And then we can just put it straight in the mouth, position it um, uh, between the molars. Then what starts to happen is we then start to chew the food. So we'll start to chew the food and what we'll then start to do is move the food to the back of your tongue. So as it starts to break down, we'll not only move it to the back of the tongue, we'll move it around the mouth, we'll move it between different teeth. What the tongue will start to do, it will start to roll and fold the food. So what then starting to happen is we're starting to expose more food to being chewed. Hence why it's not only just putting the food in your mouth, chewing it a few times and then swallowing, we need to chew it thoroughly to be able then to again make it small enough not only to swallow but also as I've mentioned before once it gets down to the um, uh, the small intestines it's then going to be ready to be absorbed so it's getting moved around uh, it's being chewed up moved around by the tongue so then moving it to the back of the tongue and then it's ready to be swallowed so we then swallow it and as you can see here it will go in through the mouth down through into the stomach and then when it meets the stomach, it will come all the way through and then down, as you can see here, into the small intestine, which is this part here, which is the bit we're going to look at next. So what we've essentially done is we've talked about the food so far being in the mouth, being chewed up, some of the reasons why it's being chewed up. Now we're going to look at what happens to it or what the intestines is doing with it once it gets into the small intestine. We're going to look at the small intestine in a few stages. So... These are essentially the stages that we're looking at. So we've got the architecture of the small intestines. Now, what it essentially is, it's a tube or a cylinder. So, or a pipe, if you want to call it that. So the food enters and you've obviously got layers, which I've discussed in um, uh, previous videos. Now, these layers, there are little sort of protrusions that go all the way around it. And what they are doing is increasing the surface area. And why they are increasing the surface area, so you've got these folds that increase it, increase the surface area by three times. Now the reason it's increasing by uh, it's increasing the surface area is so it has more space to absorb more 
um, uh, more of the nutrients because I'll discuss in a second once I've sort of completed these stages. So let's just call this stage one. What I'm then going to do is magnify this. So if we take this little bit here and magnify it out, what's happening is you've got these like fingery protrusions that are kind of going around it like that. Now again, what they've got are more of these fingery protrusions. And what you'll start to see is a little pattern emerging here. So they will go all the way all the way around and again as it says here we've got these this first layer which is increasing it by three times then we've got this next layer which is increasing it by 30 times and then finally again if we magnify one of these so if we magnify this out what we've then got is on top of that one is essentially the same pattern happening again and we've got these again more finger like structures which again are there and as you can see here it's increasing it by 600 times so what we've got here sort of stage one stage two and stage three is every time we magnify each layer what we're seeing is the same structure to increase the surface area, as you can see here, up to 600 times. So what this requires, as you can see, these are very small structures. So they need very small bits of food to be able to absorb through because here, what you will see is you've got blood vessels that come up through here. And then what's happening is the food will absorb through these layers and then that's when it meets the bloodstream. And then when the bloodstream once in the bloodstream, it will then go up to the liver to be, in some respects, detoxed, and then it will go out into the system to be carried to the muscles, to be carried to various organs in where it needs to go. So why is chewing your food so important? So this process can happen. So you can absorb the, the nutrients that you need to be able to be as healthy as you can be. So where you hear people talk about eating certain foods, um, when you eat th these certain foods, you need to be able to absorb these certain foods. So what we need to do is digest these certain foods. And the, the most important step, which is going to start the process, is chewing your food. If you don't chew your food, it's not going to be small enough to be able to get through these very microscopic fingery protrusions that absorb the nutrients uh, into them. So it can then get into the bloodstream, so it can then get into the body. So again... Why is chewing your food so important? It's because we need to get the nutrients from the food to our body and chewing is the first part of that. So hopefully you've found this helpful. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully you gain a little bit more understanding about your anatomy and about the, um, uh, the importance of not only eating the right foods but doing the right thing with regards to chewing and then you can, uh, in some respects, get more nutrition from those foods and become much healthier.